you know, you may work on a project that is, has no interest to you, but that person might introduce you to someone else, and then you get to do something a little more interesting, and you actually get paid for it, and you continue to grow from there. Um, so just don't be too good for anything when you're starting out, because you're not. And it's, it's a harsh reality. It's, it's a hard thing to hear, but it's true, and it's also the best way to learn to grow, and you'll get there eventually if you work really hard. What fallback position would you recommend for people for when they get fired? Well, I, I, I think the greatest, the greatest skill is always being connected to your peers. Now, that's not just when you're getting fired. It's also when you're coming up the ranks. You know, the people who you are studying with today are going to be the executives for tomorrow. Yeah, you know, the most difficult challenge was, was, was in my mind that, you know, I, I wasn't prepared for the next job I had. I felt inadequate in that. It was like, you know, again, I was... I'm a, I was a 40-something year old uh, chief financial officer who had never been a chief financial officer for a $25 billion company. You know, I was a little, I was a little intimidated by that in my mind. I certainly had the capabilities and, 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 you know, the confidence in myself. But, you know, I was like, can I do this? You know, and I had that. And the people around me, back to Leslie, had more confidence in me than I had in myself. And so, you know, you need that around you because you're going to have those moments and just saying, uh, you know, am I in over my head here? And then the more you do it, you're like, oh, no, I'm onto something here. And it builds and it builds and it builds. So that's what I always say. It's, again, it, you, can, you can translate that into anything. It's okay to be a little uneasy in your stomach at, when you go home at night and put your head on your pillow and you say, did I make the right decision? Was that right? And that, did I do enough? That's okay. Because if you're thinking that way, my guess is, the answer is yes. At my leadership program last week, we, uh, 31 participants that were men and four participants that were women, co-ed. And there was an uh, exercise that we were doing. There was one woman at the table. We asked them to scribe and take notes, and the woman stood up to do this. Do not become binder girl. Do not become the note taker because you happen to be a woman. So those are the ways you can begin to say, hey, Mike, you can take the notes. There are some ways we can gain power I, I heard a little bit of your question is because I'm the person that's doing it, but do not put yourself in a place where you're always the administrative backup, unless that's your job, but don't make that be your job. Don't let the f default position, because you're a woman, be note taker, coffee getter, uh, cleaning the table after the meeting. That's a collective energy, and particularly for young women starting out, that's something that we see, and you know, if you are the people that jump up, then people are going to let you. But I can't tell you how many times I've been in a situation either where I've been consulting or I've brought consultants in where they have not done their homework. And they want to be the smartest person in the room and they can say all the right things and they have all the right words, but they don't really know what the hell they're talking about. And they haven't taken the time to look under the hood and to understand the entire business. So when you when you're in consulting or you know, what you guys do at San Cherry or what anyone does, what, whatever job you're in, don't just get so focused on what you have been hired to do. Learn the whole business, right? Because A, you might find that you're interested in another piece of the business, but it just makes you a stronger person. So in the work we do, it, it takes us a little bit longer maybe than some consulting groups, the work that we did, but it's because we took a lot more time on, on the front end. And, and learned the business and did the homework. And um, I, you cannot do that enough. You cannot know enough about a business. I think having <clears throat> the hard skills, what you guys are studying, whatever, is very important. But I think as time goes on, what is equally, if not more important, is your soft skills. Um, IQ versus EQ. I don't know if you guys know about emotional quotient, but it's just the ability to read a room, to read people, to get along with people. And you can be book smart, but if you're not people smart, it sometimes becomes more challenging throughout your career. Um, you know, the other piece of advice I can give you as a parting shot is, you know, your greatest talent is being yourself. Um, everybody here, I know a lot of these people personally for years, I, I've met some of them just recently, but most of them charted their own careers based on the strength of their own belief in themselves. Um, and you know the, the media landscape is changing. It changed while we were sitting here today. Um, that's no joke. Um, and so your ability to chart your way in the media industry is really just a matter of believing that you can do it, asking the right questions, um, being open-minded, being prepared to adapt, um, and then continually, continually retraining yourself every day. 
um, really learning a new sport, going, waking up stupid every day and seeing what the world has in front of you. Read, ask questions, reach out, take chances, take risks, um, and then make sure that you always follow up in a way that puts your best foot forward.